Hello. Have you ever wondered when you're setting up a finite element simulation and RV modeling of um, unidirectional composites, if the positioning of the fiber actually has an effect on the result that you will get? So this is what we're going to be doing here. We're going to look at the effect of the positioning of the fiber between an ordered arrangement and a random arrangement. So we're going to run simulations on this to see how the material is going to behave in order to, to check whether there is really an effect this will have on our simulation. So this is what we're going to be looking for, looking into today. If this is the kind of content that you like, please do subscribe to this YouTube channel um, so that when contests like this are made, you'll be the first to see it. And so also please click the notification button so that you'll be the first to see when contents like this are made. So let's go and look at the object for the study. So the first thing we're going to be looking at here is the problem. So first and foremost, this is a, a, a micrograph of a typical unidirectional composite, say a cross section of a cross ply carbon epoxy laminate. So that means the fibers are laid in in, in two directions, one in the zero degree direction, the other one in the 90 degree direction, and also the zero degree direction. So it's a cross ply com composite. I've taken this picture from the test book by FC Campbell on structural composite materials. So, and, and the main thing that I really like you to look at is the random distribution of the fiber, which are essentially these gray circles or ellipses on this uh, micrograph. They are kind of randomly distributed in space. And so this is what real composite look like. But what we find is that in practice, what people, when people begin to model this, they don't always consider this randomness. They use a bit of kind of ordered representation to, to model this. So the question is, does it really matter if the fiber distribution is random or ordered, especially when we're considering the RV representation? And so this is what we are going to quickly be looking into. So let's investigate this numerically. Okay, so the virtual domain that we'll be using for this will be a 2D system of a unidirectional composite. It's a square RV with a length of 150 by 150. The fiber diameter is 20 microns and it still have a volume fraction of V of 35%. So this will be the representation of the ordered fiber position that we're going to be using. So it's nicely distributed in an ordered way in space. And this will be the RV that we'll be using for this. In terms of the random one, so again, this will be the random positioning that we'll be using. So the fibers are kind of distributed as realistically as possible in space of how, how it's going to be. Now, how do we generate this thing? So for the other case, we're going to use linear patterning within Abaku CAE to do this. So it's a really straightforward process and nothing ex exceptional about this. However, when we start going into the, the random fiber distribution, I'm going to be using a pre-written Python script, which will be executing inside Abaku CAE to do this. And the principle of, of this uh, random positioning that we'll be using will be based on a Monte Carlo method, which uh, was used to implement this randomness. So in a future video, I will be talking about this Monte Carlo method. So I do want you to watch out for a video about this Monte Carlo method. And also, if you are interested in recreating this, the Python scripts um, that I'll be using, I'll be putting a link in, in the comment section in this video. So the material that we're going to be using will be a glass fiber reinforced plastic, um, which is a 73 gigapascal Young's modulus, the polypropylene properties uh, for that of the metrics are specified. And the number of fiber that will meet this requirement, you know, I've already done the calculation is 25 fibers. So of course the positioning of the of the fiber also noted here. Okay, the fibers are the circles and the other region are the matrices. So two case studies is will be what we'll be studying, a simple tensile deformation to the fiber axis along this x-axis, and then a shear case in the xy plane. In terms of boundary condition, and this will be how we're going to constrain it in you know to create a tensile deformation. And then in terms of shear, this is how we're going to constrain it to impose a simple shear to this model. So let's now switch over to Abacus. Okay, here we are in Abacus and we're going to begin to do the modeling. So the first case we're going to work with is I'm going to start off with the ordered case. Okay, so I'm going to call this ordered fiber. So let's start with just an ordered fiber position. So it's going to be a 2D system deformable shell. Um, I'm going to make this about 600, so it is quite big enough. So I'll create a mask to help me. So I'll put 00, 
150 by 150. So this basically tells me the region within which I'm going to create my ordered fiber arrangement. Then I now need to create a fiber. So I click the circle. So 00 is the region of the circle. And because it's 10, it's, uh, it's um, 20 millimeter in diameter, microns in diameter. So this will be the, the position. So I'll start with this. Then I use the linear patterning portion option. So select the pattern to so I'll select just that. Um, and then I know that the distances apart will be 30, 30 from my calculations. So I just then need to move this so that I can fill up that space and make sure that it fits into the space that I want. So everything is fine. Then I just need to delete this mask that I specified initially to help me. Okay, so we've got the linear pattern fibers all done. So we click OK. So this is fine. Then let's create the matrix. So our matrix um, would be the same system. So the matrix would be just 0, 0 and 150, 150. Okay, cancel. So there's a matrix. So we've got the matrix done. So then the next thing we need to then go ahead and do is to create the instances. So I'll double click on instance and select both of them. So that creates the fiber, then match code. So I need to create now a UD composite based on that. So based on geometry, suppress, retain, intersecting boundaries, select everything. So we've got now, if you go back to the path module, so you can see there's now a UD composite created, but then we'll have all these extra things that we need to trim off. So we'll click the create a shoot cut. So click there and click the region outside. Okay, so we've got that done. Now the next thing is we need to think about the materials. So the first one is e-glass. So we want to work with e-glass. So e-glass has got a young modulus of 73, e to power 9 and 0 0.3. It's not plastic. So the next one is PP. PP has got a Young's modulus of 1.308 e9 and 0 0.4. And then it's got a plasticity as well. So we want it to be elastoplastic. So 40 e to power 6 and 0 point what there is fine. So we've got the plastic, so we've got the sections. So this is the metrics section. A metric section will obviously be made of PP. And, and then fiber section will also be made of not e glass. Okay, so we've got all that. So you can then go back to the section assignment. Double click on section assignment. So I'm going to select everything at once first and then make everything all matrix. I know that's probably not ideal. So then this select, I don't want to create a set. Just select, select everything, press down shift. Now select everything, press down control, deselect the matrix, leaving the fiber in place. Okay, so this becomes our fiber section done. All right, so let's just be sure. So we've got that. So we've got the matrix, we've got the fiber. Okay, so let's look at the materials. Okay, so in the materials model, you don't show that we've got those differences, which are what we want. So, so we double click on the, on the mesh. So I will accept the default mesh is asking me to use accept the mesh type so it's probably easier to use a triangle um, to mesh it because of the nature of the domain so this is fine so we're happy with that we've created the parts assembly modules are all created so what i'm going to do is within within that material let's put a bit of a few um, sets so i'm going to create so we're going to use this set to apply load on the model so create an X back um, X back so the position at the back would be okay maybe let's do it this way so double click again X back X back so we base it on the nodes continue so I want it to by feature of the edge so you select somewhere close to that so that's fine then X front based on the node again feature of the edge select the front which is done so y top based on the node select the feature of the edge so select those nodes and then finally um, 
x y days okay still on the nose select that which is fine so what we've now had is we've got all the sets associated with this model so we need to probably create a reference point okay so maybe let's go to the maybe path module is fine so we'll go to reference so i know that this point is so maybe we should query first just to be sure so this point is 150 okay so if we then go back and create a reference i'm going to make this reference 200 and zero so i've created a reference point there so i could make a node for that so do it both on geometry so reference point um set so you can now select that done so what we have is that we've got a reference point we've got all the other node out, the other conditions and everything is fine the way we want it so now the the next thing we need to now do is to create the analysis step so i call this loading step okay except static general is fine my history output so reference point history history out so let's call it that so i'm going to base it on the set of the reference point okay which we've up there so on the force i basically want the two forces in x and y and the two displacements in one and two which is x and y so we've got that all done so we're going to track the behavior of the system based on that point so then we think about the constraint so i'm going to use the x constraint um, using equation so basically i want to link the behavior so we expand this so i want to link the behavior of the front set to that nodal point so one here this will be x front degree of freedom one minus one here no, reference point degree of freedom one so basically this node is linked this behavior is linked to that point which is what we want then we can also apply our load so i'm going to call it extension extension based on displacement loading steps still accepted so obviously i'm going to apply that on the reference point okay and we want to apply it in the x direction so for something that is 150 mi microns so 30 percent of that 30 percent of that will give you 45 so let's do 45 we're looking at 30 percent deformation for this structure okay uh, and then we think about the boundary conditions how do we hold the back so i'm going to say um, roller or maybe call it x back roller right and initial boundary condition so we want it based on the x back so okay so the x back roller this is fine um so if we go to the yeah and then the next one is y back y base roller so we want the y base roller as well so y base highlighted okay in the y direction so this is fine so we've got that loading and then we're pulling it in the front so we can then create this load so i'm going to call this x so let's say ordered extension okay so we'll solve for that so we can submit that job to run just to make sure everything is fine okay and then so while the job is running we can then think about the next case so um, which is a share case so how do we then do share so i'm going to say okay i'll suppress that and create x back fixed okay so again x back fixed will be based on the back again right so we fix it in the x and y direction now y base i'm going to suppress that so and that will be x front roller so x front and it's rolling in the x direction because we're going to apply load in the y direction so if we deactivate it so you, so we're going to apply so i'm going to suppress extends suppress and then we create a new one which we'll call xy share 
okay and it's a loading history so it will still be on x front so again to highlight that in share okay so now we're applying the load in the y direction and maybe we could also apply the 45 you know loading that we are we had before so you could see it's rolling in that direction and then we could then say okay this is ordered um x y share right okay so we'll submit that and then you know wait for it to run so that will run and then we'll look at the result later on so while that is happening so what we're going to then do is okay so um we're going to import the model so now i talked about the python script so let's look at the python script so this is a python script that i've already pre-written i've got a, a software that i use to create this automatically um, based on the information that i have specified for it so this magical implementation that i said i will talk about in a future video so please watch out for that future video so which i'm just going to copy that so if i copy all of that okay so let's rename this to ordered um, composite or that composite before you, before you run the script make sure you have a new model okay so let's create a new model which was original model one because you need to have this model one active before you run the script so if we go copy the script so i'll copy the script then i'll go back here and then i'll paste it there right so what you will notice here is that it's created a new one called random composite so if we open that up so you could see what it is so we've got a random arrangement which is the same arrangement as we had on the original powerpoint slide so now we're going to do some section assignments to it so let's look at what we have so they say shell from fiber so we'll, so basically need to put the properties of the fiber again so 3 e to power 9 and 0 0.3 and then that of the metrics as well so so the elastic properties of the metrics 1.3088.9 0 0.4 and then the plastic properties of the metrics which is 40 megapascal and zero plastic strain so we've got all the section assignments so now let's do the section assignment for this so we'll click again so i just click inside this section for the metrics so this is fine and then i'll look for the metrics done so then i'll select everything again press down control click on the same section for the metrics okay so that means it's selecting metrics leaving only the fiber so that gives us the fiber as well so i can go to the material module to make sure everything is fine so it looks good so then mesh so i can accept the 3.8 that is recommending okay i say global mesh i want to use a triangular shape mesh so we can mesh the domain and okay this is um, acceptable we don't have any problem with that so let's create a few sets so i'm going to have x back okay based on a nodal case future by edge so I'll select the edge here this is fine okay then x front based on a node again so future by edge okay so select that front edge so let's make sure it's selected all right so that's fine so we have to do y base it has to be based on node feature by edge select the node this is fine and then y top based on nodal choice again feature by edge done so let's just check make sure we're happy with that so back front base top everything is fine so we can then go to our part module <coughs> or assembly mo module so we're going to introduce a reference point so I know that this point is 150 so let me put my reference point at 200 and X so somewhere just a little bit away from that then I could within the sectioning within the 
assembly module so i'm going to call this rp set so this is what the reference point that we're going to use for our applying of load we need to create the step so loading step okay so rp history output um so it will be on a set again the same rp set so we've got that done that done okay so we've got those history output set now constraint so we want to constrain x constraint okay x constraint in the equation okay so obviously i want to do it from one to the nodal set so we have this is the x tensor the nodal set x constraint the nodal set would be on the x front in the one direction to minus one re reference point one direction so we've got this connected so we can apply a displacement load so x tens tension for so we apply it based on the reference point that we want and we want to apply displacement of let's say 45 as previously onto it okay now let's apply some boundary conditions so x box ruler okay so we're applying a ruler support on the back so that means only constrained in one direction y base ruler okay so y base continue in the y in the, the other direction so we kind of have that so we're constraining this by applying a load in that direction so we're going to call this random um and extends extension and then submit this to run hopefully everything will be fine so give us some ideas about everything's fine and um, if we start running then we can go back and look at what we have here so i'm going to suppress in fact all the things we've got we're going to suppress them and then create a new boundary condition for the share case so the first case will be x back fixed okay so the x back fixed so we're fixing it in the x and y direction then x front x front ruler so x front continue so it's free fixed in the x but it's going to roll in the y and then we have x y share load okay so let's do x y double click on that again x y share but it has to be a loading step okay so again we look at so we're applying it on the x front and we are sharing in the y direction and our loading on the y direction would be again 45 but there's something we need to do in the constraint equation so we're going to create the x y constraint so again one still with respect to the front but we are now loading in the two directions so x y minus one with respect to the displacement in the x in the y direction so reference point in the two direction okay right so so we, we've got that so we're just going to suppress the constraint one so that we only have what is active there so if we double click there so we're going to now have okay random x she, x y share So we'll submit that and the model will now run and then we'll come back and look at all of them okay the simulations have completed and have now shown all the results so this is the x y tensile for the ordered case so if we reduce the speed you could see what's happening here so this is showing the shape this this for me stress so if you look at the plastic strain so it shows you a nice uniform distribution of the plasticity across the material um, there are a build-up of plasticity on the corner um, and, and fibers there, 
but apart from that it looks quite uniformly loaded um, and this is what you get with an ideal case okay so if we look at the share case on the other as well so you get a similar kind of response so nice uniform with the loading on the inner however the fiber remaining non-responsive as, as, as it's very rigid um, if we look at the plastic strain okay so you do see that there's a build up of shear bands around that which is kind of a nice mirror image due to the symmetry of the solution of the result so the extensor for the random case and you begin to see some interesting um, interesting behavior um, so the deformation is, is, is a bit random now and then you can begin to see a clear shear band forming on the material um, a fracture angle forming clearly in the material um, at a defined angle which which is what you would expect with composite materials which we didn't see in in the other case so you do the same and look at the shear case as well so the shear case especially look at plastic strain so you get again a build up of information around around that and we can animate that and see what's happening so it makes sense to compare all this so let's create multiple viewports so I'm going to create three viewports and then we're going to tile them all horizontally okay so we've got them horizontally so this first one we're going to make it the extensor case the second one will be the X shear or that shear case this fourth one will be extensor as well but in the random case and this will be the X Y shear in the random case which which we have here so I'm going to link these viewports so they are all kind of linked so so that if we then show okay so let's show the result for this one in the deform case this one the form case this one the form case and this one in the deform case all right so what we're going to then show next so again if i move this somewhere okay so let's make sure we we have all these viewport links so linked viewports they are all kind of linked all right so let's move this into position and then we can animate it and see what's happening um, for all of them especially when you go to the plastic strain you begin to see some interesting deformation behavior the deformation behavior is quite different for all of them so if we go all the way to the end so there are some in interesting things so in the other case you have a nice positioning and there is no shear band formation no fracture angle that will form in cryo composite you have a clear fracture angle that is forming in this case um, due to this angle forming and in the other case you've got a symmetry in the way this is showing here we also see on set of fracture angles but they are quite you know quite different in terms of what you'll see so if we try and exaggerate this so if i make this one all right so you could see what's what's happening so there's a clear deformation the boundary condition we have here is, is different but you know we're going to work with this um so there are differences in the result this is basically what i'm trying to show that it does matter whether you have an order on a random arrangement what people do in in, in publications and just decide to use an ordered arrangement has their limited it has its limitations so you can see clearly that the evolution of the fracture and the fracture path is all important here so this is why it's something that um, you need to be aware of when you're considering what kind of rv to use clearly there's an importance to using this also we may go ahead and extract some of the stress strain graph associated with this um, and see if there is any difference between the predictions you know between this and that so we're going to do that next thing so let's first start with this first tensor case um, let's go to viewport and on tick linked viewport so we don't want this viewport linked so we now go to this history output continue select rf1 u1 plot so this is the plot that we're looking for go back again operate on this data that we have using the combined option where u against f plot this expression so we've got a nice data here so i'm going to rename this and call it um ordered extents okay all that extends so now the next thing we're going to do is we bring out the ordered random extends 
go back there then history output continue so we still want rf1 and u1 plot that data okay so for this case which is the other case a random case so what we're going to do is to go here history output continue rf1 u1 plot so we have two cases temp1 and temp2 go back here operate on this data combine that two set of data u1 against r1 plot this expression and so so this becomes if i rename that so this will be random extends okay so random extends so random extends so let's add this plot to it okay so you could see there's a slight difference between the two Okay, so it makes sense maybe if we go and use Abacus Tools, Excel Utilities, so we can study this a little bit better. Okay, um, so current plot, everything on the current plot, I want to get that into Excel. So it will operate on that data, get that data into Excel. displacement divided by 150 and the stress will be the force divided by the area which is 150 times 1 so let's just use a unit depth for this for this so we get that so I mean we could divide this by 1 e raised to power 6 okay so that's what we have so this will be Displacement 150 force divided by 150 times 1. So, so we can get that. What I'm going to do with this is going to divide this by 1 e raised to power. Okay, so times 1 e raised to power uh, minus 6. So let's just be, sh be careful here so so it's not strain that I'm looking for so what I'm looking for is the force okay so we have those two cases so again we could bring them out here and try and figure this out so this would be the random case and then the other one would be this one will be the other case so this will be stress force displacement so we've got those two cases um, so if I just expand this all right so there are a few things that we could look at so ordered random so in the other case, we want to find the Young's modulus uh, yield strength. Okay, so we'll do the same for the random, just to get some quantitative data from this. So this will be the slope. So the order obviously will have to be based on here. So this stress against strain. Okay, so I could say, okay, I'll divide that by 1 e raised to power or times 1 e raised to power minus 9, minus 3, I believe. So that gives me gigapascal. Um, so this will be the maximum of the stress data here. Okay, so this will be the slope again 
of the stress against the strain. Okay, maybe times one e to the minus three. So that gives you gigapascal. And then this will be the maximum of the y data. Okay, so we could see, so this is megapascal. So you could see in comparing the ordered and random case, there are slight differences in terms of what you're getting. There are slight differences in terms of what you're getting. So for example, the, in the, the U strength is being over predicted when you're using ordered case, while in the random case, it's a little bit less than that. So, and also the stiffness is higher in the random case than in the ordered case. Um, so that's just a better example of what you can learn from from considering these things and then you could you could you could also study the graph to show you so in the linear elastic region not much is happening in the plastic region and you begin to see some interesting behavior um, but the implication of what the, the conclusion really is that if you're going to do anything the the distribution the position of the fiber is absolutely important if you're going to explore the behavior of of Compose it using an RV size. So we've not even affected, assess the effect of RV size in this. We just looked at the fiber positioning and we can find this as, as our conclusion. So if this is the kind of content that you like, please do subscribe to this channel so that when contents like this are made, you'll be the first to see it. If there's again a video that you would like me to make um, to support you in getting started with modeling, so please do recommend that in the chat window, sorry, in the comment section, and then I'll be able to look at it and consider making that video to help you. Thank you for your interest in this channel, and I'll see you in the next video.